Okay, Tubies, we're back with part two of the Kohler flush valve installation. As you've seen in part one, I showed you the parts and the tools required. I even explained the steps in assembling this flush valve kit to your toilet tank. Now, once again, I'll go over it really quick. That's our part number 1117210. Kohler flush valve kit so this is uh, the actual flush valve this is the last piece that will be assembled so what we're looking for once the tank is bolted back on you basically want your bubble to show that your tank is level I cannot stress enough this system, when you're applying it, does not have to be torqued down super tight. You're dealing with a porcelain object. It will break if you over tighten it. You're basically treating this thing like an oil filter on a car. I don't know if you're aware of this, but when an oil filter is placed on your car, it is only hand tightened. They don't put tools on it. The mechanic grabs it with his hand, tightens it as much as he can, and that's that, and it never leaks. So let's go to the bottom and I'm going to show you a couple of things. What we have down here are the reinstalled bolts. I made sure to clean any type of uh, sediment or, you know, basically what could come from, uh, you know, water deposits and stuff. As you see, my toilet is pretty damn clean. I try to keep these things really, really clean. It hasn't been clean in a couple of days, but I'll get back on it again. It hasn't been used in about a week. So what you see right here, looks like, oh, it's just light reflection. I thought there was some dirt or something there. But no, super clean. So those are the bolts coming through the tank, and those are the washers and nuts. What you see inside there, hard to see, is the squished rubber boot. Now, that is the seal. The seal is connected to the tank from the bottom outside of the tank. What you're seeing right there is the base of the flush valve. I want you to pay attention to that keyway. You see that little keyway? That's gonna be an important step in putting the actual flush valve back on. So what happens, you have to watch video number one so you'll understand how this was placed on. This was placed through the tank from the inside, it has a rubber seal on the inside that pushes through the rubber seal on the outside. The rubber seal has what looks like pegs or dowels that come from the outside of the tank up. These screws are pushed into those dowels which have the centers bored out, but they don't just go in easy. So what I do, I get a little bit of Dawn dish soap and I put it on the threads of the screw and it goes in like butter. If you try to do it dry, I'm sure some of you guys have tried something dry and it just don't go in. So, a little bit of Dawn dish soap on those bolts and they'll slide right into those grommets. Once that uh, is put through, on the bottom, there'll be a tightening washer like this. I have this one, it came with a kit, but I preferred the other one because it was black and it just seemed like it was a better type of ABS plastic. I'm not saying this one's no good. Kohler made this and it must be sufficient. I just like the feel of the other one and the design was a little bit different, but the two flush valves are identical, so it's not gonna make a difference which of these uh, tightening bolts I put in. So let's see if we can get a picture. Well, we can't. You're gonna have to watch the first video. Those are the standard tools that I used. Screwdriver and a 13 millimeter socket. When I was removing the tank, I had to pull the bolts out. So I grabbed the bolts from inside of the tank and I pulled them off once I had the screws undone. This is the dust soap that I used to put those bolts on. This is how much soap I put on each of those bolts to get it go through. You don't need to bathe them. You don't need to dip them. It's that much literally. And that'll be sufficient to get the bolts in. So what you do, once you get those nuts on, you're gonna tighten each of those nuts like you do a car. You're gonna go from bolt to bolt and you're gonna 
gently tighten them while pressing down on the screw to squish the grommet. So if you try to tighten that nut without pressing down from the inside on the top of that bolt, we'll call it, the nut will be difficult to get on. So what happens when you push down on the, the head of the screw, which is that part right there that looks like a penny laying in the tank, you see how it has the thing for the screwdriver? That's when you're removing them. When you're putting them on, you're not even gonna need to put the screwdriver on there. You're gonna literally hand tighten those nuts and then you'll get your 13 millimeter socket and you'll gently tighten them, making sure that when you're done, your tank is level. And also, you want just a hair of movement. You don't want this thing to be stiff because if it's stiff, that means you over tightened it. There should be just a tiny bit of movement on your tank. So with that said, let's say you fill up the tank and you see a little drip. That means you didn't tighten it enough. It's not a big deal. The big center nut, this one, when you're putting on that base, that right there, you're gonna push down on that base while tightening this from the outside. And remember, watch video one, because this will go on before the tank is ever placed on the toilet. Going back to what I was gonna show you regarding that keyway. So, I have another video on replacing. You see that seal? Every couple years, you're probably gonna to wanna to replace that seal because that's what keeps water from leaking out of your tank. You see that, the tip of that keyway right there? That goes into that keyway there. Let's see if I could get this in the picture somewhere. You see that keyway? Yeah, that's the bad boy. It's gonna go down in that keyway. Once it's down in the keyway, you're gonna turn this thing from its base like this and you'll hear it click in. If you don't hear it click, and as long as it turns a quarter of a turn, that means it's in. Do not, and I repeat, do not try to turn it from here. Okay, the reason I'm replacing this flush valve is my son-in-law thought he would do me a favor. He thought he heard it leaking water and he thought to tighten it, all he had to do was grab that and turn it. And you know what happened? It snapped off that key ring at the bottom. I have a whole video on just installing this um, seal on YouTube if you go to my channel. I'm not looking for likes, I'm not looking for money. I'm doing this to help you guys save a couple bucks because a plumber is going to charge you literally about $150 to $200 to do this job on the fact that he has to remove that tank. He's going to claim how hard it is. Oh, woe is him. But the truth about it is this crap is easy. I've been teaching my four-year-old. Every time I replace something on the toilet, she sits in here and she watches how it's done. My teenage girls can fix just about anything because I did the same thing with them. Let's see if we could get this uh, thing on here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna push it through like that. I'm gonna look for that keyway. See if I can line them up. There it is. Keyways in, it just pushed right in. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this up and I'm gonna get my fingers around the base and I'm gonna turn this thing clockwise. There it is, no click, quarter of a turn, it's on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna reconnect this on the top. Well, I usually use two hands because trust me, this thing here, it's flimsy. Let me put the camera down for a second. Hopefully it won't fall into the toilet. There we go. I'm gonna spit on it like the old school. And we're gonna push it on. Uh-oh. Might have to put some, oh no, there it is, it's on. So now, we got that on. Last thing we're gonna do is the first thing we did. First thing we did, is we drained the tank. What I did, I flushed the toilet, then I shut off the water through my three quarter turn. You know, look at that rust. So I'm, I'm crazy about bathrooms. I love the bathroom tile I put in here. I did a great job in my shower. I did all this myself. I did my lighting. Um, 
you know, when I was a kid, we did a lot of tile. We're Mexicans. So, going back to this. Some people will just put a bucket here, pull this off, drain 99.9% .9 of the water, then get a rag and dry out the tank before they remove it. Because if not, you're going to make a mess in your water. You can check up your baseboards. So, here it goes. This is going back on. We're going to do a water test as soon as I tighten this up. I know I'm talking a lot, you guys, but I'm just trying to pass time. There we go. Everything's lined up. Oh, see, look at me. I got to lift this and spin it around so that the chain connector is right here. So that's your chain connector. But to save time, that's a pain in the ass to put on. Let's just do the water test and we'll lift that thing manually. There we go. You see our fill valve on the bottom, filling up from the bottom like it should. Our hose is sending water through this hose into the flush valve, which will raise the water level in there. That's some hair I threw in from the shower the other night when the toilet wasn't being used. So, in just a second, this tank will be filled and we're gonna go ahead, if you have patience, and we're gonna do our first flush test. And at the same time, we're gonna check for leaks. So give this a second, it fills up pretty quick. In the meanwhile, um, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe I have to show you my next project. You see that? That call has to be replaced. I've been looking at that every time I'm sitting on my toilet and I'm realizing, damn, I gotta get, that's not dirty folks. That's just, just junk that builds up on caulk. It's really easy to clean. You get a razor, you scrape it out and it will look just like that again. That's a clear caulk that's clean. I don't have a water softener, so that's why you see a lot of water spots on my aluminum. Unfortunately, I have a septic system. Uh, we're in a rural area um, of Avocado Heights. So with that said, that's why you see all that water deposit buildup, but it only takes about an hour to do that whole job. About 30 minutes to clean it real good, about 15 minutes to put the caulk and 15 minutes for the caulk to dry to the touch. But that doesn't mean it's cured. It usually cures in about, I would say, 24 hours. But uh, the shower is holding up well, as you can see. Subway tile. Okay, water tank's almost full. There we go. So let's look for some leaks. As you see, there's a little water on the floor, but that was from the hose that I had disconnected. It just dripped out of the hose. So we'll dry that up real quick. Dispose of that toilet paper in the trash can over here. Bad video, we don't know. Okay, so look at that. No leaks anywhere. Not leaking there, and I barely hand tightened that. I didn't put a wrench on that. Just like everything else, even those screws hand tightened, and once I get them to where I feel they're right, I just turn them about a quarter of a turn with that socket to put a tiny bit of pressure. The key thing is, that the washer inside is squished, the washer seal, underneath the head of that screw. This is looking perfect. We don't got no water coming out of here where we set the tank. So perfect. Now we're gonna flush it. Let's go. Oh, can't flush it because I didn't connect the valve. So I'll just manually lift it. There goes the water. You can hear the toilet flush. This will drop down and seal, voila, job complete. I can't hold the camera and put this chain on because that is very difficult. This thing is made to slide. You see it just turns all the way around, but when it sits, it automatically falls into its place. That means your seal and everything is good. So with that, I bid you an adieu, and I hope this was helpful. Um, I never asked for likes or anything, but if you want to do it, do it. I don't think it's going to make any difference for me. But maybe other people will see the video and uh, think it might be of some use to them. All right, you guys. God bless. Remember, put something on the floor when you're working on your tank and your lid because this stuff will break. You got to have it. This is a thick, thick towel. Basic tools, once again, a level. I used the wire brush to clean any minerals that had collected on the bolts prior to me reinstalling them. 
I used a little bit of this to wipe down the inner part of the tank, the outer part of the tank where the seal was gonna sit to make sure everything was clean. I did rinse it off though with water because I don't know if this stuff is corrosive to the rubber. So I wiped it with this and then I wiped it down again with clean water. That's how I did it last time with no problems. Remember your tweezers so when you loosen the bolts to take off the tank, you can pull them bolts out. Your 13 millimeter deep socket for under the toilet, removing those nuts and then refastening them. And that screwdriver. The screwdriver was only used when I had the 13 millimeter on the bottom to loosen the nuts. Because when they're on there for a year or two, they get tight. Probably just, you know, could be water deposit or whatever. You put that on the nut, you turn it from the bottom, you're done with the screwdriver. You don't need the screwdriver to put this thing back together. So there it is. God bless everybody, and I know I'm long-winded. Thank you for watching.